in this ministry, worship ministry in local church, volunteer supported ministries. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut of like, there can't be anybody else out there who is facing this same thing. Well, while your situation is unique, I'm here to tell you that there are, there are people out there facing these things too. Hey, I'm Andrea Olson. I've been leading worship and training worship leaders for nearly 20 years. And my mission is to support worship leaders just like you in volunteer supported ministries because I know what it's like. I've been there. It's amazing, but you have a big job. And sometimes you might feel a little bit alone, but I'm here to remind you that you aren't. We'll cover spiritual and leadership growth, practical resources, and get encouragement from other worship leaders from all over the world. I truly want to see you lead from the overflow, not the overwhelm. So grab a cup of tea or coffee and join me. Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode. I'm really glad that you're here. So it's spring, finally. I don't know. It's like Minnesotans. We just can't help but talk about the weather. So if you're not from here, that's what we do here. We just open up all of our conversations talking about the weather because it's kind of volatile here. (laughs) So we never quite know when winter's going to be over because we could get a snowstorm in May. Maybe. It melts right away, but still, we just never know. And so we're so happy when spring finally comes and when summer finally comes, because spring, summer, and fall are absolutely gorgeous in Minnesota. Winter is beautiful as well. It just got a little bit long this year. But wherever you are in the United States or in the world, welcome. So I'm going to kick off today's episode with something new that I started a while back. And that is just to share something new that I'm learning to share a verse or a quote. And so today I am sharing with you from a book called How to Worship a King by Zach Neese. If you haven't read this book, it is absolutely phenomenal. And it's one that I take all of my interns through who come through uh, my mentorship program, because it is just so powerful at laying the groundwork for why we do what we do. And and Zach just does a beautiful job of articulating it in a way that's relatable and understandable, but also impactful. There's some conviction in there as well as the Holy Spirit works in our hearts through his words. But I was, I was reading and this quote says, praise is not a denial of our circumstances. Praise declares that God is faithful and trustworthy regardless of our situation. Faith doesn't say, I'll trust God if he will pull through for me. Faith says, I know God can pull through for me because I trust God regardless of what happens because he has already proven his love for me on the cross. So I I don't feel like that needs much explanation. I think that's powerful. And I just want to leave you with that today as our kickoff encouragement, whatever space you find yourself in today. Just remember that he has already proven himself faithful. And so he is not going to start leaving you in a place where you feel alone or anything like that. He's not going to start leaving you now. He is going to stay with you. So that is not going to stop. He's always been faithful. He's proven his faithfulness and that's not going to stop now. So you can trust him. So I just encourage you with that today as a kickoff to our episode. So today I want to talk to you about something. If you're new here, you may not know this, but Overflow Worship has an online community called Overflow Worship Leaders Online. It's a membership site where people gather from all over the world, worship leaders just like you, who are working in churches with a small staff. Maybe you have limited resources or maybe you've got a small team. This is 95% of churches in America, and I found that there is a lack of resources for you as as making up most of the churches in America, there was a lack of resources. And so I've taken my 20 years of experience of leading worship in small and medium-sized churches and of teaching and training worship leaders from all over to thrive in the ministry that God has called them to. And I put all those trainings together in a membership site. And it's not just me, it's other people from all over the world who are teaching and training and sharing their wisdom within this membership site. And that's something that's really just launched in the last six months or so. And I'm so excited about how that community is growing. And, you know, one of the things that we do every month is we meet in a monthly membership event. We all gather together on Zoom. And you know, what's so cool about it is it's the, it's, 
the last Friday of every month. And sometimes there's multiple people, but sometimes there's one. And if you're one of the lucky ones to be that one person, you just get me and my director of operations, Lauren, to yourself to ask questions and to bounce ideas off of. And we just came off of an amazing event in the end of the last month. And we got to chat with somebody really just just direct and being able to hear exactly what she was facing and exactly how we could come alongside of her. And so I just wanted to take a little bit of time in this episode to peel back the curtain so you could see what happens inside these community events. And what we do is we just simply meet on Zoom. I usually have a couple of of topics to go over if there's no questions, but there's always questions. That's why you come to these events because you want to hop in and say like, look, this is a struggle. I'm facing, or this is a win that we're celebrating. And we want to celebrate those with you because the reality of it is in, in this ministry, worship ministry in local church, volunteer supported ministries, sometimes we get stuck in a rut of like, you know, what's in front of us. Like, this is what I got to do. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I've got a thousand things to do. And I, I, there can't be anybody else out there who is facing this same thing. Well, while your situation is unique, I'm here to tell you that there are, there are people out there facing these things too. And that's why it's so beautiful for us to get together in these events and to chat in our ongoing chat thread in the community as well, which I'll talk about in a second, but to have these monthly member events where you can look around and say, wow, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in this. And I can bring my questions big or small. It doesn't matter. It can be super tactical. It can be really broad. It can be really personal if you want to, but it's a safe place for you to share and for you to look around and say, wow, look at all these people around me. They care and they're in it with me. And so it's just a really amazing hour that we get to spend together. And I facilitate, I give encouragement and input and tips, but then also it's an opportunity for, you know, sometimes we open it up for other, well, sometimes that's what we do. We open it up (laughs) for other people to also say like, Hey, well, here's this challenge that this person's facing. Anybody else face that? What did you do? And we get that unique outside perspective and realize like, Oh yeah, I was kind of in a rut with tunnel vision because I was so focused on the problem. But we as a community have the privilege of having an outside perspective to say, Hey, what about this? What about this? You could try this or just to encourage you to be sad with you if you need someone to be sad with you and to just be there and support you. And so this last month, I just want to highlight a little bit of what we talked about. So we talked about this, this concept of maintaining spiritual growth. Like how do we as worship leaders who are in ministry, who are on the platform every week, like how do we stay sharp in the word and how do we stay filled because you are constantly pouring out and if you didn't know this i'm going to tell you now that that is the very foundation of overflow worship right you can't lead from empty i want to see you lead from the overflow not overwhelm but you got to be pouring into yourself you have to be taking the time to invest in yourself spiritually and so that you have an overflow to give because eventually if you don't you're going to run out of resources right you're going to deplete your spiritual reserves completely and then you got nothing left and then you're at burnout and that is not what we want for you and so we were talking about that and talking about just practical ways to implement rhythms of of spiritual growth of time with the Lord of private worship, those kinds of things. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about was just, there's, there's a lot of pressure for us, I think, as Christians who maybe if you grew up Christian and in a Christian home to have a routine that looks a certain way, you know, like, well, every morning, 6 a.m., 6 to 6 30, this is what I do. And if I miss it, it's terrible. Well, I just would encourage you as you're listening, and this is what we talked about, to maybe set that aside. I encourage you to set it aside and think about getting outside the box a little bit, getting outside the rhythm. Maybe you need to change it up. Maybe you need to go for walks instead. Maybe you need to have a few different devotionals that you rotate between so that you don't feel like you're getting stuck uh, in in a rhythm of just feeling monotonous, right? And, And so 
that very conversation was so powerful to have because we looked around and realized like, man, I'm not alone in this because sometimes I feel that way too. And of course I gave practical tools of like, I'm reading this book or, you know, you could try this because that's just kind of who I am. I'm, I love resources and I love sharing those with other people if they might be helpful, but it was just such a powerful thing for us to, to look around and realize like, we're not alone in this. And, and you're not a bad person. If you know, you missed a (laughs) missed your 6am devotional session, like maybe you just are so depleted that you need to just turn on some worship music and just be. Yes, we've talked about rhythms and discipline and like, you got to make it a priority. So you're going to hear me say that, of course. But in that, there has to be grace. There has to be grace for our, our souls and being kind to our souls. And so if you are like, I am, I'm bored with what I've got going, or I'm just depleted, I'm tired, I'm all the things. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe you just need to be refilled and just sit and say, Lord, I'm here. I just need your presence and just turn on that worship music or go for a walk and turn it on or go for a drive and turn the music on, whatever you need to do. And God meets us in that. He meets us in that because he knows that we're pouring out all the time and he wants to see you have an overflow. So that was one of the really amazing things that we talked about in our monthly member event and we were able to just bounce ideas around and encourage each other in that way. But something that was really interesting that also came up was, you know, this concept of feeling like, you know, I, when we lead from the platform, so we moved on to a new question. When we lead from the platform, sometimes we look around and it's a little bit disappointing to see engage, the lack of engagement with our congregants. And we feel like it's our fault right? We feel like, okay, well, I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm a terrible person. I'm a terrible leader. I picked the wrong songs. I didn't hear the Lord, like whatever (laughs) you fill in the blank. I've like told myself all of those things and felt all of those things. And especially when you're in, you know, a church that's under 500 people, right? And so you can like, you know, the faces, you know, the people, you can see them all. And that sometimes is really discouraging. And you know, you'll hear me say time and time again that, you know, you got to cultivate an atmosphere of worship and, you know, give you tips and, and tools to help you do that. And that we need to, you know, make sure that we are investing back in our people and, and teaching them the why behind our what and all of those things. Those are important, but you got to remember this one thing. And this is one of the things that we talked about in our last meeting that it is not your responsibility like it's not it's not your responsibility to get them to raise their hands or get them to sing you are there providing a place for them to come and encounter And you have prayed over that, that time and you have prayed over that set list and you have prayed over the musicians and, and the service order and the sermon and all of those things. And your job is not to like command a certain outcome. Although we would like that because it's like, could somebody, anybody clap their hands? Anyone, someone, (laughs) does anyone else feel that way? I've had times where I'm leading worship and I'm just like, I feel like I am working so hard. I'm sweating up here and everyone's looking at me like I have three heads and it's it's really hard. It's very discouraging sometimes, but we don't know what's going on inside their heart, right? We don't know. And it is not your responsibility to command a certain outcome. It's not. Now, is it our job to be prepared? Yeah. Is it our job to, did you hear that? Yeah, Minnesota. Um, Is it our job to be prepared? you know, going before the Lord and spiritually preparing? Yes, it is. Is it our job to carefully craft the set list so that it flows and preserves the atmosphere of worship? Yes, it is. But when it all comes down to it, you can only do what you know to do and you have to leave the rest of God. And that was a beautiful conversation that we were able to have. And if you would have been there, you would have seen this amazing conversation happening back and forth of, of, different things that you can do and in different ways to continue to teach your people the why behind the what and teach your people the why behind the worship because that is truly where the connection starts to happen right when we understand why and we understand what worship 
is, then it starts to connect and it's like, oh, why wouldn't I give him praise? Why wouldn't I, you know, lift my hands or whatever that looks like for you? Why wouldn't I open my mouth even, you know, if it doesn't sound amazing? Why wouldn't I? And, and that is the transformation process that we get to be a part of from the platform. And so I just encourage you today, hang in there. If that's you, if you're in that spot and you're wondering like, do they, do they hear me? Why aren't they responding? I I just got an email from somebody recently saying something very similar. And I, I just encourage you. And as I emailed back and forth with that person, I encouraged this person as well. Like you are going to see fruit as you are planting those seeds and you're doing what you can to help cultivate that atmosphere of worship and teach them the why behind the what and what worship is. And that doesn't mean your like sermon series is about worship all the time or you're like preaching a little mini sermon every Sunday. No, it's small things, little things to bring them along. You're going to start to see the shifts. I promise you, you are. And so I just encourage you in that to stay the course. Now, why did I peel back the curtain for you? Why did I take this little mini episode? It's going to be a little shorter than usual. Why did I do that? Because I want you to come and be a part of this community too. If you are a worship leader, I want you to see that we put together this membership site for you so that you could have a spot to come and feel like, huh, look at we all feel this way. There's a whole bunch of other people who feel like they're running around like chickens with their head cut off and they love what they do, but they also just want a place to like come together and talk and learn from each other and have a vault of resources to, to train at my own pace and, and to be able to say like, this is what I need. Can you create this? And we say, yes, we can. Let's address it. Let's help you. And that's the beauty of the, the size of this community. We can tailor it. We can tailor it to what you need and, and address those in our conversations. So I invite you, if you have never heard of Overflow Worship Leaders Online before to check it out. If you have been thinking about it, I encourage you to join us because it is a powerful way for us to come together, to fellowship together. And, you know, I talked a little bit a minute ago about the the chats that we have going on in the community as well. So I'll just peel back the layers on that too, because why not? So we have this special curated platform. It's not Facebook. So if you're thinking like, oh, it's just another Facebook group I got to become. No, it is not. It is specifically customized for our site. And when you head into this community platform, there's tons of different conversation opportunities to have. There's places to post questions. There's places where we host our live events. There's a calendar of events. There's all these different spots for you to interact and ask questions and and celebrate with each other. And it is powerful. And so that is probably like my favorite part of the of the membership site. And it's like the best kept secret. It's kind of the hidden gem because most people think like, oh, I'm going to come in for, you know, the courses that they offer and all the video trainings and the resources and the tools, but you're probably going to stay in it because of the community because we need each other and we need you there. We want you there. So I invite you head over to overflowworshipleaders.com and just check it out. So much has changed. If you saw it, you know, even a year and a half ago, it's not what it was. It is brand new and so so amazing and so cool. So check it out. Now, I want to leave you with this encouragement. I just want to go back and circle back to what I was saying before about, you know, you don't have to take responsibility for how your people respond. You have a responsibility to steward this job. You have a responsibility to steward this calling. So if you're not, if you're not investing in yourself, investing in your team and investing in the church, then yeah, that is on you. And that's point. I know it's pointed. I'm not sorry though, because it is on you. You need to be doing that. We can't just skate by this ministry. Like I said in my last uh, solo podcast, it's not about you right? It's not about me. It's not about my platform. It's not about the only outlet I have for music. No, 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 no. If that's your mindset, you are in the wrong spot. Okay. There's a place for a musical outlet. There, There is like, and it's a beautiful space, but it's not in worship leading. Okay. So you better make sure that this is your calling because if it's not your calling, then you're not going to thrive in it. So you are responsible to invest in yourself, to invest in your team and invest in your church. Yes. 
but you got to give yourself some grace in the process and know that your church is in process. If they are less demonstrative and a little more like uncertain, maybe it's new for them, new songs or new types of music. Just keep that in mind. It is a slow journey and I know it's hard. I know it feels long, but I promise you as you just walk alongside of them and hold their hands and continue to demonstrate what worship is, what it looks like and why we do it. I guarantee you, They will come along with you and they will begin to show that connection that they have with, oh, I understand why and I want to. And that looks different in every church. It's demonstrative in some. It's more, you know, just a, it's, it's really loud singing in others. Like I've been in some churches that there's not a hand raised, but man, it is the most beautiful sound I have ever heard because they're all singing four parts at the top of their lungs. So there's, there's lots of different ways that we express worship right? Um, But I just encourage you with that. Stick with it. Stick with it. Now, last thing I'm going to leave you with is a resource because I love resources. If you are looking for a great book, check out that one that I read from in the very beginning, How to Worship a King by Zach Neese. We'll link it in the show notes. Guys, it is so powerful. And there is so much meat in there of why we do what we do. And maybe after you read it, you think like, maybe I should read this with my team. And you know what? Maybe you bring it to your pastor and say like, should we read this as a church? Like, is that a thing? Maybe. I don't know. It is so good. I recommend absolutely every worship leader and team to read it. So on that note, I just encourage you, keep on, okay? (laughs) Keep on. You are doing a good work. Thank you so much for taking precious space from your day today to listen to the episode. I'm truly honored that you chose to be here. Now, if you love today's episode and you haven't already, would you please take 30 seconds and leave a review? I actually read every single one of them. And not only does it help us in developing content that's relevant to you, it also helps us reach more people. So head on over, please, and leave us a review. Tell us what you love about the podcast. Now, if you haven't already, I have another resource resource for you, be sure to snag my completely free guide to creating an effective and engaging set list every single time. You can get my free set list checklist at overflowworship.com slash set list checklist. And that is a great example of a teeny tiny little snapshot of some of the resources that you would get inside the membership site. So be sure to grab that set list checklist at overflowworship.com slash set list checklist. Thanks again for listening. And don't forget, I truly believe that you can thrive with what you have, where you are. I'm cheering for you. And until next time, keep on thriving.